Right, so uh, we're still at Ali Sport, and Andrew, the owner, has just grabbed me before I go and said, would I like to film uh, a new product that's just been tested and finished and being put in production? So we're going to have a look now at the new airbox on this Puma. Okay, so we start off by standard procedure of removing the airbox, um, which just unclips and it's tucked into the wing. Manky old air filter. Now this just sits in some plastic pins and some rubbers and there's two uh, above the boost pipe and there's two under the wing so you have to sort of pull it out of the wing and then rotate it. So it starts off you've got two pins here and two pins underneath which sit into the, the bracket on the chassis. I don't know if you can see underneath there, but there's two there's two pin uh, rubbers on the bracket on the wing there. So this is one of the main reasons why we've uh, designed the replacement airbox. The original system is very restrictive um, and has just a very poor interference fit. Uh, so there's no clips or anything for that. Um, so if you were fitting a snorkel, it's all very well sealing it to the outside of the wing, but none of this system is sealed. Um, you can actually see daylight through the airbox and that just pushes onto the airbox as well. So there's no seal at all. Um, and yeah, like I say, it's very restrictive. The standard grill fits on the outside of the wing um, and just screws through the wing with a bit of poor rubber seal. So our adapter, is a 3D printed part. Well, we tried various ways of manufacturing this ducting out of aluminium, but it's such a convoluted shape uh, that we ended up with this 3D design, which works really well. You know, that is sealed um, and just goes straight to the ducting. We set a, a metal ring inside so that you can tighten up the Jubilee clip because you could potentially, if you tightened up the Jubilee clip too much on, on that, yep. it would squash. So that just fits through to the, through the wing with an adapter. Um, and we replace that, that restrictive ducting with some 90 mil twin wall silicon pipe, which is reinforced wire bound. So this is a simple, a simple operation of just slotting into one of the pins on the inner wing and that rotates round and pushes down into the bracket on the chassis. So really so it's plug and play isn't it? That is it, there's no modifications. Originally we were only going to do the high intake one that, uh, that comes under the wing but then um, we realised that the left hand drive would be a problem because of the heater duct and also we found that a lot of people have already fitted the nugget stuff air intake system so that is designed to fit in the original place it's fit to the original airbox so we've made this one potentially you could actually fit it with the original ducting if you really wanted to so the intake is is connected and it it is possible to fit these with um, with the original intake hose but they're a bit rubbish and um, you have to cut it about a little bit so we generally would suggest that you use a silicon intake pipe. This filter is an off-the-shelf one and they're available for about 10 or 12 pounds. Again, we found that some others on the market use an aftermarket um, air filter and you have to use that filter. So you have to go back to the manufacturer and they're quite expensive. So we specifically wanted to use an off-the-shelf yeah. cheap filter that you can buy anywhere in the world. So literally that just fits onto the turbo same as before so everything comes in the kit yeah everything comes um, we we can supply it without the silicon hose but pretty much everybody will have that right. hose realistically and again I see you've got you've got some of your own hoses on already but if you didn't have those it would still plug and play it would I mean it will go on to a completely stock car but uh, I think realistically if you're going to the expense of fitting this part it would be well worth 
upgrading to the silicon intake hoses really. This one is actually a, a pre-production one where we've adapted it so the latest ones don't have that weld. Um, we've machined this part with the with the curve on it already so um, so the latest ones are slightly different. Um, and then the airflow meter just plugs back on. Now these are these are sealed we've tried them underwater so completely waterproof and uh, and dustproof. And we supply some little locking clips with them as well. And that just goes through there. They're a bit like our clips, but a little bit more secure. And that basically is it. So yeah, half an hour, we'll see it completely swapped over. You know, a lot of them are used in very dusty environments. So certainly the, the sealing from dust is, is key. Um, and then that leads on to a performance gain. At the top end, um, which admittedly you're not going to drive it at the top end of the revs all the time, but it was, I think it's off the top of my head, about 38 horsepower. This was literally the airbox being changed, nothing else. Initially, we've just got a fairly standard car with just a mild tune. The point of this exercise wasn't about the figures. It was about the difference in the figures. You can see that the airflow is increased right from sort of 1300 RPM and it increases gradually. So the, the power at this point here, it's already increasing and comes right over. And up here is a huge gain. And the same with the torque. And the torque just feels, when you're driving, if you were to effectively lift off somewhere in the mid-range and then come back on again, the response would be greatly improved. It's very apparent just how much better the airflow is. It's an immense gain. Um, but it, it, the, the response is very difficult to show on a dyno graph. So when you drive it, the, the throttle response is noticeable immediately. You know, in the first half a mile, you would notice it. The worst bit is getting the original plastic airbox out. Which you hate anyway, so you can be as brutal as you like. You it. can, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful of the, um, the fan shroud. But other than that, yeah, it, it, just pull it out. We have a production run starting now. We're, we're in production um, for both types, for the high and the low intake. Um, we've done some which are powder coated black as well, uh, which look very nice and they're a bit more... Um, sort of subdued colours. We can ceramic coat them if you wanted to have it completely shiny and stay shiny. And I presume LR Parts will be having some of these on the shelf? Yeah, I mean, they're a priority. They've got some on back order, um, so they'll be priority. The first ones to go out will be to, to LR Parts.